Hello, Donation of the Alcanes. Well, this looks like a secret place here. No photographs allowed, coned off. Let me take a little look inside. Ooh, chlorine and methane, a halogen and an alkane, all under red light. Red light has low energy. It's got a high wavelength and a low frequency compared to other forms of light. Hmm, I wonder why it's so secret in here. Maybe I'll take a photo after all. Just line it up. Dr. Atkinson rushes in, concerned that the photo may be a problem. Ooh, oh dear, the photo flash emitted ultraviolet light, which is high energy, and it caused the reaction to be initiated and exploded. There are three steps to this. Ooh, that was dramatic. Step one is initiation. So if I take the chlorine molecule, draw the dot and cross diagram, and shine ultraviolet light on it, there are two things that could happen to the electrons in the bond. They could both go to one chlorine, leaving a chlorine plus and a chloride ion. That's called heterolytic fission. Hetero means different because it produces two different things, but that's not what happens. So the answer to the initiation problem isn't heterolytic fission. That isn't what happens. It's actually homolytic fission, where the electrons in the bond are placed one to each chlorine atom. Homolytic fission. Homo means same, so it produces two things that are the same. Well, what is that funny looking dot there? Uh, well, that dot means it's a radical. Okay, so what's a radical? Radical is a very reactive chemical, and the two reasons for that is because it, it contains an unpaired electron and it has high energy. Why has it got high energy? Well, I just zapped it with ultraviolet light. That's pretty high energy for you. So the dot means radical. Step two. That's, pro That's very dramatic as well. That's propagation. Step two is propagation. So here's some propagation equations. Now you can see that this reactive radical reacts with the alkane and it makes some sort of methyl radical. Now this looks a little confusing, but propagation means that you start with a reactive radical and you have to end with a reactive radical, which means the reaction can continue because you've made something reactive. Never H dot, that's just part of the mechanism. It never makes this H dot or H radical. Well, let's think of another one then. You could try and rip off another hydrogen there. There are many, many, many of these. Don't try to remember any specific ones, just try and come up with them on the fly. Step three is termination. Hmm. Dramatic again. Termination is where the reaction uh, will finish, that part, the mechanism will finish. So you can see if you get two reactive chemicals, to radicals, they'll come together and the chemical they make won't be a radical anymore. The reaction will have finished there. The IB favourite is to make ethane from two methyl radicals. So two radicals go to make no radicals and that part of the mechanism has terminated there. Let me give you a few tips, no extra charge. These are the four chemicals that are quite often produced. There's lots of the monochloro and there's not much of the tetrachloro because the tetrachloro needs many, many more steps to make. Sometimes they ask to explain the presence of some funky chemical. Well, two methyl radicals will make ethane and then you can lose a hydrogen from the ethane like that and stick on a chlorine radical like the third equation. So that's a termination, a propagation, and a termination. Ooh. So termination might not be the end. And just for giggles, sometimes the IB ask about ethane, maybe propane, 